So this video is about um, lecture 25 of uh, Math 219 Differential Equations. Um, up to now, we considered methods of uh, solving, finding solutions or other uh, information about solutions of ordinary differential equations. We were looking for functions of uh, one variable only. And uh, at the end, uh, uh, for the last few lectures, we are going to consider now uh, partial differential equations. Uh, partial differential equations in general uh, are even harder than ordinary differential equations. So we are just going to consider uh, some examples with uh, a certain method um, and we will see how to how to get solutions or information about solutions uh, when uh, this method works and the method is uh, basically separation of variables. So um, examples in Examples of partial differential equations uh, usually come from, um, you know, physical, uh, from physics. So, um, of course, we can consider different types of equations, but the example we are going to consider here is a heat conduction on a road. Conduction on a road. So we have uh, a rod of some material uh, and suppose it extends along the x-axis, let's say, uh, uh, along the x-axis from the position x equals zero to the position x equals L. So the number L is the length of the rod. Um, okay, now uh, we consider the uh, temperature we denoted by u at the position x at time t. So this is temperature at position x uh, at time t. Uh, so we consider the case when this temperature uh, varies uh, with uh, time. Okay, so um, of course we need to make some uh, assumptions. Uh, so the assumptions we are going to make assume that uh, temperatures at the end of when x equals zero at the uh, left end of the rod and uh, on the uh, right end of the rod are kept at zero uh, for all t. So uh, temperature um, at, the, at the ends are kept constant somehow at zero. Um, heat can escape from can escape from the ends, but not from the lateral surface. So this is the physics of the situation. You don't need to uh, understand uh, how it comes about, but um, uh, for us, uh, we are interested in how to get the solution. So the heat equation, heat equation, it comes from physics. It says under these conditions, the partial derivative of the temperature 
with respect to time is equal to some positive number, lambda squared times the second derivative of the temperature function with respect to x. So u sub t is partial derivative of u with respect to t, and u sub x x is the second order partial of u with both with respect to uh, x. Okay, so um, we also, so we have these conditions at the end. So th these are called boundary conditions because they are about the boundary, right? X is between zero and L. So X equals zero and X equals L are the boundary, uh, boundaries of uh, the rod. So boundary conditions, u zero t u l t equal to zero of course um in a different situation those boundary conditions may be different uh, they may not be constant first of all for every t it will come it would complicate things a lot and even if they are constant they may not be the same constant and they may not be zero but uh, here in the example we are going to consider, uh, we uh, assume that the boundary conditions uh, on both ends are zero. And also we need an initial condition. Oops. Suppose we know uh, the heat distribution at time t equals zero. So u x zero, when at the time t equals zero, suppose we know this distribution given by some function f of x. So at the time t equals zero, we know the temperature uh, at every point on this rod, okay, at every uh, position x. So of course the question is find uh, this function u of x t. Okay, um, in the broadest sense of generality, in the uh, broader sense, if we uh, if we need to explain how to work out such an equation, it involves uh, two steps. Okay. So um, we break it, we break the problem. Into two steps. In the first step, we work with the boundary conditions only. Uh, so find as many solutions. Uh, as po as possible of the equation u t equals alpha squared u x x uh, and boundary conditions. And this is about the method of separation of variables. And two, uh, among this, these solutions, uh, find one that satisfies the initial condition. And this is about a Fourier series. Uh, okay, so uh, as the first step, we consider the method of separation of variables. Uh, 
So what we do is uh, we have a function of two variables, u of x and t, but now we assume that uh, this function can be written as the product of two functions, one a function of x only and the other a function of t only. Okay, this is the method of separation of variables for partial differential equations. So we separate the variables into a function of x only. And a function of t only. And uh, try to find a solution of this uh, equation subject to the given boundary conditions uh, in this form, function of x times function of t. Now, uh, to find the functions, capital X and capital T, we take the derivatives and uh, substitute into the equation. Now, partial derivative with respect to T, uh, the function with respect to X is going to be like a constant, so we have derivative of the function of T. And similarly, second partial with respect to X is going to be the second derivative of the function X times the uh, function of T. A function of t is going to be like a constant. So when we substitute into the equation, we have capital X, uh, capital T prime equals alpha squared, capital X double prime, capital T. So I can rewrite this as capital T prime over alpha squared capital T equals capital X double prime divided by capital X. Now, you see in this case, the left side is a function of T only, alpha squared is a constant. So this is function of T only. And this side is a function of X only, but they are equal. If you have a function of x equal to a function of t, the only way this is going to happen is when this function is constant. There's no other way, right? Because in the function of t, there cannot be any x, and in the function of x, there cannot be any t, uh, but they must be equal, so there cannot be any x or any t just constant. So the only way uh, this is going to happen is uh, when this is constant. So that constant, um, you can take it to be any number, but uh, we are going to, you see, um, yes, I know this is guessing what is coming next, but what we do is we take this constant, so both of these should be equal to a constant. We take this to be minus lambda. So this gives us uh, two equation, equations. Uh, one equation, t prime equals minus lambda alpha squared t, and x double prime equals minus lambda x. Okay, uh, so what we are going to do, we are going to work with the second equation to find lambda, and for that value of lambda, we are going to work out the first equation. Okay, so uh, consider the second equation, double prime x plus lambda times x equal to zero. Uh, this is a linear equation, linear constant coefficient equation, ordinary differential equation. We write the characteristic equation. 
La uh, hmm, okay, lambdas are going to uh, be confused. Let me use r as the variable of the characteristic equation. r squared plus lambda equal to zero. So r squared equals minus lambda. So now uh, solutions of the characteristic equation. So you see the reason we take minus lambda so that when we take it to the other side, it becomes plus lambda. Okay, so the solutions here depends on whether the number lambda is negative, positive, or zero. So we are going to consider these cases separately. So the first case, lambda negative. If lambda negative, then r squared is minus lambda, this is positive. So r is plus or minus square root of minus lambda. So we have two real distinct roots. And the solution then, c1 times cosine, um, let me give them names. Um, um, okay, let me call this number k, plus or minus k. So k is square root of minus lambda, okay? So um, no cosine, no cosine, what is cosine? As c1 e to the k t plus c2 e to the minus k t, right? Oh, okay, um, hmm. uh, I forgot. Uh, we also have the boundary conditions. Boundary conditions, uh, gives boundary conditions for this equation in x. So remember u of 0 t is 0. This means capital X of 0, t of t. This to be 0. Of course, we want the function capital T not to be a 0 function. Uh, so we have the value x0 equal to 0. Okay, let me explain here. Uh, from boundary condition, u of 0 t equals 0, which is x0 t t, we get x0 equals 0 because uh, if t is 0, this means for every t gives a uh, um, trivial solution. Of course, we are looking for non-trivial solutions, u equals 0. Uh, if you take the constant zero function, definitely satisfies the given equation. Uh, this is not what we want, of course. We want... Um, um, okay, it may not uh, give the initial condition, but we don't want the zero uh, solution. We don't want the trivial solution. So similarly, the other boundary condition, again, since we have the function t for every t, that we don't want it to be zero. So that gives xl to be zero. So uh, we have, uh, we have what we call a boundary value problem, not initial value now, this is boundary value problem, uh, x double prime plus lambda x equal to zero, that's our equation, and boundary values x zero and xl equal to zero. This is not an initial value problem because to be initial value problem, we need uh, the value of the function and its derivative. For a second order equation, we need the value of the function and its derivative, but here we have 
instead of the derivative, we have the value of the function at the other, at some other point. So basically we consider the interval from zero to L and zero and L are the boundary points. So we have a boundary value problem. Okay, so from this uh, general equation, now we consider the boundary values. So um, remember we are in case one, lambda negative, K is square root of minus lambda. So we get the solution C1 e to the KT plus C2 e to the minus KT. Now X zero is zero. So if you substitute zero for T, uh, zero for, mm, what am I doing? This is not T, this is X. I'm sorry, X is a, our equation is in X. I'm so used to working with T that, Uh, capital X is a function of X, so, okay. So we put zero for X, uh, e to the zero is one, so we get C1 plus C2 to be zero. And then at the other boundary, XL is zero. So if you put X equals L, we get zero equals C1, e to the um, L K plus C2, e to the minus L K. Right. Uh, I'm claiming that uh, these two have only one solution, both C1 and C2 equal to zero. Let's see why. From the first equation, C2 is minus C1. So put it into the second equation. So C1 times e to the LK minus e to the minus LK is zero, but this number is not zero. So C1 is zero and C2 is zero. So this gives then, since both of them are zero, we get X equals zero and this gives us the trivial solution. We are looking for non-trivial solutions. Okay, so we look at the next case, hoping that that uh, case might give us some non-trivial. So uh, we take lambda to be zero. So then our equation is x double prime equal to zero. So that gives, of course, this is easy, uh, just integrate. So x prime is just a constant C1 and uh, x is C1 x plus C2, right? Uh, and the initial condition x zero equals zero implies if you put zero equals x, we get the constant C2 is zero. Uh, X capital L equal to zero means um, if you put capital L for X, remember C2 is zero. So this gives you C1 equals zero. So again, X equals zero, trivial solution again. So our only hope then is in the third case. Case three, lambda positive. Okay, now R squared is minus lambda negative. So uh, the roots are complex, uh, plus or minus I times square root of lambda. Uh, since lambda is positive, uh, so we can say that it is the square of some number k. Then uh, square root of lambda is k, positive number, take k to be positive. 
So the solutions are plus minus I K. And X is C1 times cosine K X plus C2 times sine K X. And since cosine and sine are periodic functions here, we have some hope of getting a non-trivial solution. Okay, uh, let's try the uh, boundary value x0 equals zero. Uh, if you put x equals zero, cosine zero is one, uh, sine zero is zero, so we get the first constant c1 to be zero. So x is just a constant c2 times sine kx. Now x of capital L is zero, so zero equals C2 sine KL. Remember, uh, our mission is to find the values of lambda uh, for which we have non-trivial solutions. So to C1 is already zero. So to get a non-trivial solution, Uh, we need the constant C2 to be different from zero. So C2 sine KL, so that means sine of K times L should be zero. Number L is given, remember L is the length of the rod. So L is given, L is constant. But K depends on lambda, so you can think of it as the problem of finding K in terms of L so that sine of KL is uh, zero. But there are infinitely many such numbers. Uh, sine, uh, sine function, when the, uh, is the sine function equal to zero? Sine function is zero at multiples of pi. And any integer. Zero plus minus one, so K is n pi over L. So n can be zero, plus minus one, plus minus two, plus minus three, and so on. Um, okay, so for each n, we get a different k and we get a different solution. Okay, it depends on the value of lambda, meaning, uh, so lambda, remember, is k squared, it is n squared pi over L. So for each n, an integer, we get a non-trivial solution. Uh, we are going to call it x sub n, which is, um, Okay, I'm going to disregard the constant. Uh, I'm trying to get independent solutions. So just take the function, the sine function, and what is k? n pi over L uh, x. Okay. So for each n, uh, I get uh, a different uh, solution. Okay, n runs through integers, so plus minus one, plus minus two, but because of the nature of the sine function, for example, if you take n equals minus two, uh, for the sine function, you can take the negative sign out of the sine function, you get minus sine for n equals two. So uh, since sine of minus x is minus sine x, it is enough to consider only positive integers. It's enough to consider n equals zero, one, two, three, and so on. Okay. Uh, so uh, let me uh, summarize then. Um, 
uh, I get the solutions xn sine n pi over l x for n zero one two and so on. Now we need to find the corresponding function capital T. So xn is for uh, lambda n, which is n squared pi squared over l squared. Remember, lambda is uh, k squared. So again, we have infinitely many lambda for each n. Uh, and the corresponding equation uh, for uh, t capital T what was it T prime equals um, uh, T prime equals minus lambda T uh, no minus what was it okay let's go back and check it uh, uh, T prime equals minus uh, lambda alpha square t. Okay, and here lambda is positive. Okay, so t prime plus lambda alpha square t equal to zero. Okay. Uh, all right, now, how do we solve this equation? This is again a linear equation. Uh, or you can solve it as a separable equation. Let's see. Yes, maybe uh, also separable. Since we have zero on the other side, also separable as an ordinary differential equation. So t prime minus lambda alpha square t uh, dt over capital T equals minus lambda alpha squared dt. So natural logarithm of t is minus lambda alpha squared plus, uh, let me see, how do I uh, write? Yes, plus c. So if you take exponential of both sides, t is e to the c, again, some constant c, e to the minus lambda well, there, there should be a t here, lambda alpha squared t. Okay, and again, take c equals one, we need just one function. We get t sub n, depending on the value of lambda, e to the minus, what is lambda n? n squared pi squared over l squared alpha squared Then uh, we have the corresponding solution for u, un. We multiply x capital Xn and capital Tn. Uh, let me write capital T first. e to the minus n squared pi squared alpha squared t over l squared as sine of n pi x over l. So remember step one, find as many solutions as possible of the boundary value problem. We didn't consider the initial, uh, uh, initial condition yet. Now we have infinitely many solutions for n equals, um, for n equals zero, we have zero. So uh, because sine zero is zero, n equals one, two, three. So we have infinitely many solutions. Uh, so our experience with uh, linear equations tells us to consider uh, linear combinations of uh, these solutions. And in fact, uh, the same uh, 
uh, principle applies here. Uh, principle, so we apply principle of superposition. So, uh, what is the uh, what is this principle? If u1 and u2 are two solutions, of ut equals lambda squared u x x with boundary conditions. Uh, then u equals c1 u1 plus c2 u2 is also a solution. You can uh, see that this is true. You can take the derivative, substitute, uh, try the boundary value, boundary conditions. Uh, you can check this uh, yourself. So, uh, we get u sub x t. Uh, of course, now we have an infinite sum, n from one to infinity, uh, c n u n, meaning n from one to infinity, c n, um, e to the minus n squared, pi squared, alpha squared, t over l squared, uh, sine n pi x over l. Uh, so this function then, uh, this function, of course, there is the problem about convergence of the series. Uh, we, need, uh, we need to choose the constant Cn so that this is a convergent series. We will see later exactly how to do that. Well, not in general, but remember, we also have an initial condition. And using, using the initial condition, how to find the constants uh, so that this gives us a convergent, uh, this series is a convergent series. And in fact, it's going to be a Fourier series. So um, this function satisfies ut equals alpha squared uxx and the boundary conditions. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, we get this, and what is next is using uh, the initial condition um, to uh, find the constants, Cn's, uh, so that uh, this series is a convergent series and it gives us the solution of our problem. Uh, but for this lecture, I stop here. Uh, next time, we will consider, we will continue with uh, using the initial condition.